Hi, I'm Pastor Dave. And once again, let me say thank you for watching this, this mini video and thank you for Lindsay for allowing me to have this time with you. You know, when I hear the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag, the words come up that say we're one nation under God. And, and when most people want to pick apart the Pledge of Allegiance, they, they go after those two words, under God. And I did a teaching on this not too long ago because those aren't the two words that deeply concern me right now. The words that concern me are the two words, one nation. Because I have been concerned for a while that we are not one nation. We are a divided nation. And that divide is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, by the time you see this, we will just be a, a day or so away from our election. And I know Lindsay's list of, of, of email list and people who follow him goes around the world, literally. So I'm not sure where you live or where you are when you hear this, if you're not in America. But I can almost guarantee that you've been following the elections here in America. I like to go to the UK and to a, a source called The Telegraph, which is based in London. I, I've found when I've looked at other media, uh, you don't have the biases that you have here in the States as far as the division, as far as the Republicans and Democrats the, and, and so on and so forth. There's biases in the U.S. media, and when you get outside that, there is, there's not as much. And The Telegraph, on every Friday, they have a U.S. election briefing. They've been doing this for a while, so they are updating the, the United Kingdom and, and those in London, uh, what's happening with the U.S. election. And, and the title a week or so ago was, if Donald Trump wins, his supporters warn of another revolutionary war if Clinton wins. Uh, so when I saw that title, again, because my heart has been so deeply touched with the fact that we may be uh, much more of a divided nation than we admit, then what I want to do is really understand what this revolution means. In this article I'm quoting from the Telegraph, it says people are going to march on the Capitol. That's a 25-year-old man who told the New York Times this. He says they're going to do whatever needs to be done to get her, Clinton, out of office because she does not belong there. And that, that's just one person, and that's just one 25-year-old in New York. A, a woman who was at a Mike Pence rally says she's ready for a revolution. She says, one of the things I can tell you that a lot of us are scared of this voter fraud. She says, our lives depend on this election. Our kids' future depends on this election. For me personally, and this is a woman speaking at a Mike Pence rally, for me personally, she says, if Hillary Clinton gets in, I myself am ready for a revolution. And, and then another Trump voter in Boston told the Boston Globe, if she's in office, I hope we can start a coup. He goes on to say, we're going to have a revolution, take them out of office, if that's what it takes. There's going to be a lot of bloodshed, this reporter, uh, this man says, to, tells the Boston Globe. And he says, if that's what's going to take, I will do whatever I can for my country. And again, my heart was breaking because I feel we're already a divided nation. And now we have people in New York and Boston, and it didn't say where the Mike Pence rally was at. But we have people across the country. Is that what we're thinking as Americans? And, and the world is watching what's going to happen with our election. One spot in particular is Russia. Russia is becoming overtly aggressive. There was an article out recently talking about how they, um, the, as we were flying flights over Syria, we were on a mission for, for peace, and they were on a, a, a spy mission, basically. And the Russian jet crossed within a half a mile of the American uh, fighter pilot. And it, now a half mile may not seem that, that, that far or that close, but it said you could feel the wash from the jet come over the American plane to the point to where the pilot could have lost control. And the Americans called the Russians and said, you know, what happened? And, and Russia just said, we didn't see the plane there. But Russia has been getting more aggressive. They've launched their nuclear submarines. They're putting the nuclear missiles back into, in, into other places. They are, they are stepping up possible warfare to the point to where Lithu Lithuania, which is on the border, they are now updating brochures that they're handing out to their people. And they said that in case of Russian invasion, they want their citizens to be prepared for this. Tens of thousands of copies of this 75-page uh, pamphlet were handed out to the people in Lithuania. And they're basically saying it's a survival guide. 
how to survive and how to be prepared for a Russian invasion. So other nations are worried about that. And as the presidential elections coming in, if we become a divided country, what happens to the countries that, that have power and, and can rise and elevate? The, the world is watching what Russia is doing as well. In fact, Russia just failed to win re-election in the United Nations Human Rights Council. That, that's a three-year term. So nations have to apply for this, and when they, when they get voted in, then they're part of the Human Rights Council. But because of what Russia's doing, especially in Syria, they lost their position there. So for three years, they won't be involved in the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council. Hungary and Croatia are the nations that came, became part of that. Uh, so when you look at Russia, when you look at China, these are two nations that are getting much more aggressive on the world scale. China has also been coming very close to our ships, our battleships. Uh, in parts of the world. So this is aggression out there. There's aggression on fo foreign soil and there's aggression on American soil. And the question is, where does it all lead? What do we do? You know, as, as Christians, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, obviously we need to be on our knees. But this is a time where it's much more than just a presidential election. This is a time where it's much more than, than just uh, putting a new leader in place. The response to this, the chaos, which I hope doesn't happen, but the chaos which is being spoken of, if, if it comes to the forefront, what's the next step? Where does that lead us? See, this is where we're thankful for somebody like Lindsay, who would keep us up to date and keep us informed and allow us to understand what the, what the elite are thinking, what the plans are. I mean, it could lead to anything from blood, bloodshed, as that one man said, to, to martial law. And if America gets into that situation, what does nations like Russia and China do? You know, in the end times, if you read the Bible, the Bible talks about a day like this. And it talks about what leads into a day like this. And my question is, are we there? Are we, are we heading into that day that the Bible told us about many, many years ago? You know, I have many articles like that, more information like this, on my website. Again, I'm Pastor Dave. If you want more information about the topics I'm talking about or, or many other topics, you can go to the website, Interpreting the Times. That's all one word if you, if you go online, interpretingthetimes.com. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, but between now and whenever you hear this video or see this video, maybe you, saw, you see it after the election. Um, there might be some foresight there, but just be aware. Be praying. And just be, uh, be thankful for all the blessings that we have. And until I see you again, God bless you.